campus. Um, I'd like to introduce coming to the stage. You know her. She just uh, hosted the Oscars. Give it up for Amy Schumer. Oh my God! Thank you. Thank you. I only perform under helicopters. Thank you so much. This is. Every comedian hopes to one day perform on a pier. And uh, yeah, get your phones out. I want to remember this. Um, and they say, Amy, what's your target audience? And I say, they need to own six-figure NFTs. And that is who I will perform for. positions of hopelessness and helplessness. The government gives them the drugs, builds bigger prisons, passes a three-strike law, and then wants us to sing God Bless America. No, no, no. Not God Bless America. God damn America. That's in the Bible for killing innocent people. God damn America for treating our citizens as less than human. God damn America as long as she tries to act like she be coming in off of uh this clip let me tell you about it i don't think you can hear it as we podcast but it's ape fest everyone in new york city that time of year again i think this is like the third one or something <laughs> ape fest is the board ape yacht club's annual like like festival like um uh you know uh what do you call it the one in California, music festival, Lollapalooza. riot fest oh. type thing for for NFT guys. Um, if you own an ape, you're allowed to get in. I think is how it works. I don't know if you have to buy a ticket, but because like, I don't know if it's because the economy is collapsing or if it's just because it always has been dot JPEG or whatever. Uh, but it's it's really bad. <laughs> There's all these great clips happening right now of like uh you know just nothing but like neckbeard guys walking around and stuff in front of like lcd sound system who's clearly performing for a paycheck okay um hopefully it's a paycheck and not you know yeah an and ape I, that's the thing is you know, a lot of performers will be receiving ape checks yeah. at ape palooza <laughs> yeah and the worst thing about you know a band you love performing live is when you can tell they're just doing it for the ape check <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, something really funny happened is that they I guess they hired Amy Schumer, and there's this really horrible clip. AP Schumer. <laughs> it's it's weird, no, first of all, because there are no women in the audience. It's all dudes, and so why did they hire this like pseudo feminist girl boss comedian? Yeah, I mean that was the market for inside Amy Schumer was you know young men to feel like they're. Forward thinking by watching female comedy. At least that's why I watched it. The show <laughs> we all it. remember and love yes. in retrospect because it was so good. Yeah. Inside Amy they Schumer. had a couple clips of it. Yeah, it was all right. Um, Amy Schumer, if you're listening, Anders supports you. <laughs> he wants to platform your work. <laughs> <laughs> She's like bombing really hard, but you can tell it's fun. It's kind of funny. You can tell she like doesn't know what an NFT is. <laughs> <laughs> I respect the shit out of that. <laughs> yeah, I know. She's holding her set list on a piece of computer paper in her hand. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like For it's like 10,000 people. <laughs> that thing is going to be a commodity now. That set list <laughs> is going to be sold by Musk. Yeah, um, and just like like phoning it in real hard, which is both funny because she's bombing, but also because like why wouldn't you do this yeah. like this? Just take the check and run. Um, <clears throat> They're merely apes. It's a week long event though, and like that's too long for this. <laughs> Whoa, I thought an afternoon at most. Yeah, there's. I'm thinking about going in a couple of nights. There's like um, there's already it's still going. Yeah. My Where God. is it? Is it on Governor's Island? No, Is it's somewhere? in... Uh, I think it's on one of the piers in Manhattan. Okay, Chelsea. All right. That's weird that... I'm not sure. Because a lot of Don't these things... Coachella is, I think, what we were trying to think of earlier. A lot of these things, you show up and camp out. Right. right? And or this, you, you, you think it would gonna, at least have trees. Right. For the apes, yeah. For yeah, the apes. I'm they're just going to like put up a tent in the bike lane of the West Side Highway and just get fucking railed over. You get a barrel to stay inside of, like a Donkey Kong Country character. <laughs> right. And then, but it's like Firefest. You're like, look at this shitty barrel they get. <laughs> um, 
So <laughs> the other person they hired is well, also there's a lot of funny photos of uh, Jimmy Fallon who's like already there and shit faced. <laughs> oh, <like, yeah. laughs> he's in like photos that you look like you would see them on like MySpace on like a bad digital <laughs> camera. <laughs> <laughs> just, just fucking drunk, hanging out with like tech bros and shit. I support all of the celebrity behavior in this event so far. <laughs> this is exactly how you should do it. But the best thing that happened is that somebody said they were walking around <clears throat> and their Snoop Dogg is like, I think the big headliner. He's like closing whatever the, at the end of the week. Um, and so Snoop Dogg's walking around, but somebody came up to him, a reporter, and said, Hey, I. You know, can I interview you? Do you have a moment to to talk to me? And then the guy turns to him, and it's like um, Uncanny Valley Snoop Dogg. He said he like looked weird. And then the, the somebody, uh, an employee of the festival, came up and said, "No, no, 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 no! You're not allowed to talk to him. This isn't Snoop Dogg. It's an impersonator we hired." <laughs> Who just to walk around and, and like give the aura of Snoop Dogg's wow. presence, but he's legally not allowed to talk to you <laughs> because he's not really Snoop Dogg. And then he looks down, and he takes a picture of it, and his lanyard says "Dupe Snog" on it. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a bored ape. <laughs> <laughs> So they obviously he's only coming in for the day he's performing. <laughs> yeah, I would wanted, hope so. God, they wanted it to seem like he was hanging out because I just looked into. I just watched a very long fucking. They garbed stupid. the dupe snog in Snoop Dogg's <laughs> clothes yeah. that he might enrich the people of the ape community. I just I just watched a really long crazy wormhole video because I'm obsessed with the bored ape guys and stuff. Uh, and it's something I learned that it, aside from the fact that they're uh, I think because they're posters, they're, it's like they're full of Nazi dog whistles, probably just as like a 4chan Pepe uh, guy joke or whatever. <laughs> um, it's pretty disturbing how many there are, though. And we have a hologram of Goebbels performing. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> um, but one thing I learned is that apparently what when they give these... so. You know how, like, you see Jimmy Fallon on TV and he says, like, I bought my ape recently or whatever. He, yeah. he never says I bought. He says, like, I got an ape recently. Yeah. I acquired one. What they do is they give them to celebrities, but then they make them sign an NDA that says you can't say right. that you we gave this to you. You mm. have to sort of imply, like, say, like, I recently acquired an ape or whatever. <laughs> Unlike an NFT, an NDA has real legal value. You have to listen <laughs> yeah. to what it says. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, like, I think that's, like, part Part of what's going on with the Snoop Dogg thing, where it's all just like trying to create a mystique of like people are hanging out and like they love the NFTs. And the only it's the only celebrity that's actually there for fun is Jimmy Fallon. I really <laughs> want to go to this. I didn't know it was here. I didn't know I, I it was like still happening. This changes my entire week. Yeah, we should we should like try to uh, we should print out some NFTs and then show them to the door yeah. guy and then yeah. get in. They're hiring comedians. How do, right. they, how do they prove that you don't? Oh, like if you if I were to like quote unquote make an NFT and sell it to you for like a dollar, wouldn't mm. you then own one? Yeah, you can black mark ape. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it would be uh, <laughs> that good of one. It sure. Okay. Well, well I'm not a great no, artist. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Just like the uh, the the has to come from a certain oh, circle maybe. or oh, prove it's, it's like ape. one of the yeah original. Okay, okay. Yeah, if you drew Anders and Abe, it would look far too lively right. to hold any value <laughs> in this economic system of real trading. Well, anyway, hello everyone. You're listening to the world's only non fungible podcast. <laughs> Right Ooh. into your ears. It cannot be. Don't share. Don't subscribe. Uh, the unique don't right click. Um, token podcast that you're listening to. Uh, that didn't sound good. Hello, I'm Jake Flores. Anders Lee is here. Anders Lee here in person. Alex Patak is here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Alex, the tool man, Patak is here. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> this segue is perfectly in my tool man segment. <laughs> um, and joining us from. The Hard Times and other things. Jeremy, I'm going to butcher your last name because I've never said it out loud. We're only friends on the internet. <laughs> well, we, I said it to you the other day and you thought it was capitalism. Yeah. What did capital. Yeah, yeah. he did give us a lot of uh, like a hard time when I was like, we should have Jeremy capitalism on the show. <laughs> it's like, Jake's like, that's not what the podcast is about. That's not what we want on the podcast. I should change that to my name. That'd be great. Yeah. Jeremy Kaplowitz. 
Yeah. It's Kapowitz, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah you got it. Right. This is a Jay pop Kapowitz. quiz of how many Jews do you know? Can you pronounce <laughs> Kapowitz on the first try? <laughs> oh, if I say capitalism, that's really bad. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to get Jeremy on the show. He's kind of like a shadowy specter yeah. on a global scale. <laughs> <laughs> He's an international... Guys, he you can't hold I mean. the bike. He's always wringing his hands about nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we're getting real Jewy. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would actually be a great way to hold a microphone if you were podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. You would hear the crunching the whole time. Like, does this sound like anything when I do this? No, it's working great. Okay, okay. That's how we all podcast, actually, for the listener, is we all <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we pretend to be extremely fucked up not to propaganda. And you can sign up for our Patreon. <laughs> 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 Maybe we call you J Cap. Yeah, you can go. I really that? don't care, honestly. Okay. People are so prickly about names. They're so I, prickly. I yeah, thank you, Alex. As someone, who, no one has ever gotten my name right to the point where I don't know how you say it. What do they, what do <laughs> it's you, fine. What does that mean? How do they usually say? They, I get, since I was a child, I've gotten PTAC <laughs> enough times. I'm like, that is my name. Even though you look yeah. at it and you're like, there's no way. This is how this is pronounced. Yeah. There's no hyphen in your name. Um, no, I've seen, uh, my friend's mom just used to call me Tack, like pterodactyl, like we've given up on the P entirely, <laughs> and it's like, no, Poland is an important and diverse region, <laughs> we have to support their bird words. <laughs> P-TAC sounds like one of those like catheters for men. Like they're That's like right. catheters are for ladies, but you need P-TAC. <laughs> <laughs> they won't give you this at the hospital. <laughs> Tack. <laughs> Unchained. The P is silent. It's funny you bring that up because I was just thinking about this feels like a Musk invention, right? Because <laughs> like the luxury lifestyle uh, can only take you so far. People still are passing gas. They're bloated they're having to pee right like those are the slightly unpleasant things about being alive that i feel like elon musk is trying to find a way around right with catheters yeah like comfortable catheters finally you, yeah yeah he's killing a bunch of apes by trying to install catheters on them oh my god i fucking microchips. forgot about torturing the apes that <laughs> that's probably the worst thing he's done that i can think of torturing apes are we talking about amy schumer performing oh. stand-up comedy right now <laughs> Um, no, Andrews, thank you for bringing back up something that I had totally forgotten about and we need to discuss on the podcast, fart pills. Oh, <laughs> Andrews sent all of us a text before we started, I need to go buy my fart pills. And then he showed up at the front door and was like, I couldn't find them. So we will be spending the rest of this show waiting for a bomb to drop in the room. <laughs> you know, it's it smells uh, questionable in here, in, like a non-human uh, sort of smell, like uh, something that will possibly kill someone uh so i feel like my you mean my cat who is a tuxedo is, is that your cat oh i thought no, that's what the bit you were doing i'm thinking of the, like the paint smell or whatever that is oh, oh because right. we're above a glue factory right and so my gas will mask that yeah. and make it actually safer <laughs> we're walking <laughs> horses in the front I love, door i love recording in person again <laughs> very fun it's fun listen i've lived here for 10 years and i'm fine listen to my golden voice <laughs> so no i had a fr I had my a lungs friend. are stronger than they've ever been <laughs> glued together with industrial adhesive yeah <laughs> rock hard now i had a couple friends who lived in a place like like even like less uh, up to you know snuff than this and he would uh, go home. He would go to. He was, it was in Minneapolis. He would go back to Wisconsin for a week and then be sick the entire week because he was coughing out the apartment that he lived in. It was just like this. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Do you know what he lived near? Um, it was just like not up. They just. It was an illegal situation, so they just probably had asbestos and shit like that. Okay. Is he still alive? Yeah, I, I actually owe him a phone a sad call. Story. He is dead, uh, but uh, well, no, he was. Funny. He's been he on the podcast. Car. Car. He was hit by a car. <laughs> I'm saying this for canary in the coal mine purposes. How long should I expect to live? Uh, but oh, you'll be good. fine. You'll just get sick. Uh, you'll be fine. When you said you kept talking about fart pills earlier, I kept imagining like <laughs> Morpheus comes to you with like a brown pill. They look like that. <laughs> they look like the pills from the Matrix. Seriously. The you take can the, take the brown pill and fart. <laughs> <They're> like, <laughs> or so. not take the brown pill and don't do that. It, go back to your life. <laughs> Nothing changes. <laughs> no, if you've ever taken gas X, it's like liquid gels. It looks like Matrix liquid pills. Liquid gels. Yeah. You know, NyQuil looks really fun to take that way, too. And I've always thought that. The packaged <laughs> NyQuil. So. Uh -huh. It pill. is fun to take. It NyQuil? is. It, you really, you sleep good. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
And that's another thing that we wanted to talk about today is uh, tech <laughs> and the world of, of medicine and Patek. biotechnologies. Alex and Patek. Tech, all kinds go. of technologies, and one leader in that field is uh, Elon Musk, the world's <laughs> smartest man. <laughs> you know who doesn't sleep good at night? Divorced ass Elon Musk. Owned. I'm so cold. That's the Elon sting. Yeah. Because <laughs> there's no wife next to him in bed. Right. And oh. that's what that's where that comes from. But um, Elon Musk actually um, is feuding with our guest. He it's is. true. And <laughs> Elon Musk is in the news. And uh, what problem? What problem does Elon have with you, Jeremy? Tell us about your Elon problem. Okay. Where did it begin? I, let me segue. I know how dumb this sounds. That like I'm like, and I'm fighting with them. Like, I don't, <laughs> no, that's awesome. It's just for fun. I'm lying. Uh, but the feud is that Elon has. But it also like isn't because he's talking about you in like business meetings and stuff. Yeah, so. that, that video is very odd. Where he's just like, I was thinking about stealing one of their jokes, and everyone's just like, Who are you? <laughs> no. Um, yeah, he posted one of our jokes. One of our hard drive articles uh, to his page, uncredited or whatever, he like cropped us out. Right. And then we were like, you know, time to be snarky to Elon or whatever. So we made fun of him. And it was this back and forth that kind of went viral where uh -huh. he called us uh, woke, woke uh, mind virus or something. And do you. Nothing worse. So does he have. Did, did his issue with the woke mind virus come from your video game website? Or was that like a problem he was previously and to having? be clear, the video game was a hard drive. Yes. Hard Not to be confused with hard time. No, hard time like owns hard drive. Is that though? true? No more. Okay. We've, really? we've, we've split off from hard times. They're split. Oh, I don't wow. know that. They, they sold like the hard times. Are they like kissing cousins? Yeah, we do kiss. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we are related. <laughs> so that's pretty exciting It's not like a uh, Elon Musk Grimes situation. No, okay, no. Good, good. Um, well, they don't kiss. They do not kiss. Uh, Grimes kisses Chelsea. I don't know if they Vander. ever have. That's true, supposedly. Right. That's the rumor. That's not here nor there. For the uncultured listener, the hard hard times yes. is punk the onion, and hard drive is the gaming. video game. Video game gaming onion. the onion. Yeah. Have you ever wanted to play an onion? Now you can. <laughs> With yeah. hard drive magazine, Elon Musk's sworn enemy. <laughs> So we the the woke joke that we posted that he put, that he stole from us was like uh, a guy putting the Zodiac Killers letter into VLC media player and opening it. So it's like very left wing, yeah, very woke, uh, and he anti women <laughs> serial killer. I, <laughs> I don't know whoever that guy killed. <laughs> um, yeah, he killed some women. Zodiac well, killer? I guess he killed a lot of different kinds of people. Yeah, he was a equal opportunity equal offender. Equal opportunity offender. Like the South Park of killers. Yeah. Um, he yeah. would kill you if you were Matt or a Trey. He That's would come true. out and he'd go, hey, I'm going to make fun of everyone tonight. <laughs> <laughs> they tie you to a tree and stab you to death. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what were his favorite articles on the site? Sure. Because I don't know if you know this about Elon, but he's like a big satire junkie. Yes. So he, he was a big uh, fan of The Onion for a really long time. And he tried to buy, he tried to steal a bunch of Onion writers to start his own website called Thud. Yes. And um, The Onion like made fun of him. And they, they wrote some article about like The Onion buying uh, Entenmann's employees to start a cookie company. <laughs> and he like it started this weird like feud with Elon and The Onion. And um, Thud was going to be like this thing was like, Elon was like, I love satire. So I'm going to start a company that like doesn't need to make money. So it was like, they're going to be uh, non-monetized satire. And then immediately he pulled out because they were like, you can't own a satire company because every time you tweet it like affects the stock market. Yeah. <laughs> so he pulled out and all the Thud people were like, oh, I guess now we have to like turn away, make a way to make money from this thing. And it failed in like a minute. But well, it was all very cool. You wrote down a list of them. Yeah, I mean, his other companies are like Electronic Cars, which has yes. uh, been appointed by the United States government like the vanguard of stopping climate change. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then a space company, which is going to like change the face of industrialization. And then somebody on his team was like, a right. satire magazine <laughs> the with space, our portfolio. The space company is for when uh, when, when Tesla fails. inevitably fails <laughs> right. to yeah prevent climate change, then everybody's going to... It's all really be smart of him to get ahead of it that yeah. way, because it looks like that is how it's going. I'm looking here... So he has some insane quote about The Onion. That's he like how he like regards the greatest satire. thing in human history. It's like one of the he greatest human it. achievements is The Onion, which, you know... 
It's I up love there. the onion. It's great. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty funny. I'd say it's probably the greatest achievement in human history. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I would It's kind of it. one of those things with, with, where people say, like, my dad thinks the greatest human achievement is Beethoven's fifth. It's kind of like, <laughs> really? You think that's ahead of, like, the internet? It's not bad. The space tr- yeah, it's it's good, but, good I mean, song. sure. I guess it's a subjective hey, to each question. their own. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so, yeah, I mean, you've cut to the core of it. So this website, Thud. Yeah, it was a bunch of different websites. It was, like, they were kind of anonymous, and it was a bunch of different products that were uh, satirical. Like, there was one that was a gun that never stops firing, yeah, the and there was like a personality test, and Wait, they were going to do a real thing storm. that they made. No, they didn't. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No. But it was like a website you could go to, and you'd be like, "What is this gun?" And you would, you know, realize it was Elon Musk's website. That, it's, oh, it's Elon Musk's joke gun. Yeah, so. <laughs> he could uh, make he got that. Me. So he I thought so. They have a they have an, uh, a fake ad for the gun, which is called the Tax Storm, which I thought, oh. oh, we'll watch the funny ad. But then I I realized like the ad is trying to be funny, so then it's like not. It's not funny to really laugh at it, is it? <laughs> then it's just, you know, doing its original purpose. Sure. On a God forbid platform. we will laugh at a, co- a comedian's joke. <laughs> that is not why we are here. <laughs> um, yeah, so, but they launched in 2019 and they had like four projects going. Yeah. But the business model of the company was they, there's no like website you can go to that has all their stuff, that has all the thud campaigns yeah. or whatever. They just were attached to a billionaire. So they were like, we can do whatever we want forever with no business model. And then the second that he was like, wait, that's a terrible idea. They collapsed immediately because there was no way that they could possibly make money. No one knew what they were doing or who they were. (laughs) I know the one thing they didn't get to do was they were going to open a museum. With a bunch of fake stuff in it. They're going to open a fake British museum about the British conquest of heaven, which is like a The Onion idea, but is also like a full museum. That's an expensive (laughs) gag for like something that's like a, "Eh," you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We spent $10 million. It's about the level of The Daily Show doing their Trump tweet museum. (laughs) Um, The big one they had when they launched... So if you look up coverage of Thud in 2019 when it came out, uh, this is like the header on a bunch of the articles is this uh, website, DNA Friend, which was a parody of 23andMe Mm. and Ancestry.com, which was a website that took a video of of your mouth so it could see your saliva. That was how they did it? Yeah. Well, I mean, it's it's a parody, so it's not... Oh, that's wait. Not how oh, that's the parody. Did. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No. Okay. This is not real science. Don't <laughs> show your camera your mouth for medical purposes. Um, but it would take a it would take a video of your mouth and it'd be like, that's a lot of saliva. <laughs> do it again. Oh, we couldn't see if it was wet enough or whatever. And it would do sure. it like two or three times. That's cute. And then they'd send you a fake DNA report. Which I saw some of the coverage of these being like, and it was kind of racist, but it's like, also Ancestry.com is kind of racist. So I guess that's like Alan Point for their criticism of it or whatever. It's cute. Their little ideas are cute mostly, but it's yeah. like only could be brought to fruition by someone who had yes. a endless amount of money. Yeah. yeah. It is sad he didn't follow through on this. Like, yeah, he bailed so fast. If you so get it- to be that level of wealthy, you should just follow through on all of your stupid ideas, I believe. So is it kind of like the, you know, the Dave Chappelle bit where the clans, the blind clansman finds out he's black? It's like they're sending, like, you know, white supremacists send send in for this uh, website, and then they find out that they're black. Like that could be a good gag. That what? Could be fun. Yeah, <laughs> you have to be a white supremacist to sign up for the website. Though. Well, they're yeah, like, that's they you make must, you take uh, a quiz. Right, <laughs> it's an easy quiz if you know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like, who would you feel comfortable sitting next to in this movie theater? <laughs> and then like a little captcha you solve. Yeah, um, yeah, easy stuff like that. That's a good point. Um, Their big mistake was calling it Thud because every article was like, Thud lands with a thud. (laughs) (laughs) Like the dumbest thing. It's rough PR, I think. Um, So has has his attention of hard drive dropped off at all? I don't know. I mean, hopefully not. I'd love to think that he's reading it just because it would be fun. Oh, he can't not... Like, he's obsessed yeah. with stuff like is that, Is he right? going to listen to this podcast? He, I mean, that would be great. I'd love that. I'd love if he is he reading every... He liked my every... Elden Ring tweet <laughs> once, and I was like, Wait, that's really? kind of... 
That's kind of right, crazy. That big one you think had. about it. <laughs> I, I like to think that like the biggest supporter of like the New York City comedy scene is Elon Musk, and he's like at the stand every night. Well, this like, he's probably the... underwriting several yeah. comedy clubs. <laughs> this gets to the core of what I'm interested in, which is: is he going to try to cut under and buy the hard drive magazine to destroy I mean, it from the inside? Because that's kind of what he did to this other company. That's true. That's true. Maybe he will. I don't know. And and good for our owner who would get a lot of money for it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would uh, go back to making other tweets. <laughs> I'd be done with gaming. That don't do that. <laughs> Wait, so, so he started Thud? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's interesting. I mean, because like it doesn't have uh, all those other satirical websites have like audiences and like <laughs> media that they're kind of already attached to. Like I was just I'm reading this book right now about like uh, right wing comedy, and I learned something interesting this week. Which is that the Babylon B, which mostly sucks, sometimes goes after Joel Austin. They started off as good. <laughs> they originally really? they originally were just like a Christian satire site where they're making fun of like Finally. Christian. Finally, someone was doing it, taking Christianity to task. Oh, I thought you uh, meant like for Christians. Well, it was, no, but it is. It's, it's, it's like weird. It was. It's, but it got bought out by like a conservative guy. Yeah, uh, it's weird. I, going into reading this chapter of this book, I was like, no, there's no way. Like, they, it's a hot take. Oh, the, the Babylon Bee was good at some point. But when it was Christians making fun of mega churches for being bad Christians, that is still a good point. Right. Kind mm -hmm. of, or whatever. That's the pen being mightier than the sword. Lord in, in a Christian way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but it then ultimately gets sort of consumed with the entire, like, everything that's going on in the right-wing coalition, so it has to be, like, a shitty let's go Brandon thing or whatever. Well, their main thing they do is they'll be like, yeah, um... There's a new ice cream flavor out, but we don't know what gender it is. Yeah, like, <laughs> shit like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a that's pretty saying, good, though. That's a product of, yeah. like, pandering to an right. audience that is the audience... If you just make one of these things out of thin air, like Elon Musk did, the audience is Elon Musk, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah he made it for him. He's like, uh, you know, Mr. Burns uh, hires Homer as a prank monkey. It seems like he just did an entire company that was just that, just for his own amusement. But, and he but now he still does have a prank monkey. He should have kept the well, prank. The problem is that he kept it. killing them. <laughs> <laughs> he tortured them all yeah. to death. Yeah. And they were, they were so bored too. Is the other thing. <laughs> I do feel, I mean, I'm sure the people who ran this were fine, but they, he essentially, he didn't poach two Onion editors in like 2016, 2017, but he talked to two guys who worked at The Onion and essentially led them to believe he would give them an unlimited amount of money, and then they all left their jobs. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, I'm sure they're doing fine. They have very Anglo-sounding names, but uh, <laughs> it is a kind of a tragic moment in art history there. <laughs> So, but he loves the B. The B is the Babylon B is like his favorite thing because the oh, Babylon he B them. he doesn't own them, but oh. he loves them. Well, it doesn't them. have the woke mind virus. They do they, jokes that are like uh, Elon yeah. Musk is has a huge dick or yeah. whatever, and is is based or whatever. Right? Yeah, that's it's like not. literally like their kind of headline Hilarious. where it's just like, what if Elon Musk was even cooler? They do um, <laughs> Chuck Norris shit with Elon yeah. Musk oh, basically, okay. so, yeah. and he'll and he'll respond like, "This is the greatest satire ever." <laughs> <laughs> okay, really like where you're going with this. <laughs> so yeah. the rumor. I like am he, an emperor, and I am wearing clothes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so Babylon B got taken off of Twitter because they uh, like misgendered somebody like egregiously or something. Right. And then apparently he spoke to them, and was like, "I guess I got to buy Twitter." And then like a week later, he was, he tried to buy Twitter. So I don't know if it literally is that he tried to buy Twitter to like unban the worst account wow. on the website, but <laughs> so it's, they're it's possible. The, they're the reason he's like lost the most money percentage yes. wise he's yeah. ever lost in a deal. <laughs> <laughs> like two billion dollars. That's pretty cool in its own way. Yeah. <laughs> Just the scale of it. Ooh, yeah. you got stung by the bee. Think about what you've done for our country. Have you made a billionaire lose two billion dollars? Very little. No. Oh. Not even anything close to that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I do have a few more of their projects they were they were trying sure, to yeah. get off the ground here. One of them was a this is like pretty basic stuff. They had a satirical guide to LA restaurants named Mampfin. And then they would they put like an out an actual book and you could buy it and it would be like, Do you want to go to Splorf or whatever? And it'd be like, ha ha ha, ha Splorf. Like, so why is it um, called Mampfin? Because it's it's make it's taking a critical look at the world around us, Anders, and it's kind of reflecting 
that these are what these restaurants be sounding like. All right. I didn't know if it was a spoonerization of something <laughs> like what. And then they, the most controversial one that they made in like their top four thud projects that came out originally was Plug, which is the universal sure. orifice adapter, which was like a stick with a bunch of crazy shaped balls on it. And it was just like, you can put this in any kind of orifice. <laughs> Which I really like as like a vague product. Like I think the idea of the vagueness is very funny, oh, but then it does it, also have like, hey, what gender is your blue? Oh my god! god. Yeah. <laughs> Which does seem like they had Elon in the pitch room, and he's like, they should got a plug. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they're gonna be asking for next is a plug. Why is the gender joke so irresistible to people? It's simply like, irresistible. So many comedians have done it, like, in specials. Yeah. Like, kind of knowing that it's career suicide at this point, they <laughs> still can't, like, not taste yeah. the juiciest peach in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's always, like, a bad joke. It's so too. weird. They're always <laughs> the thinking about their, their gender. Like the dodo of old, <laughs> one by one, <laughs> asking where the Adam's apple is. It's literally always front of mind for these people, then. Yeah. It's going to be like, come up a lot. Well, They're I, probably constantly thinking about, oh shit, am I the right gender? I don't know. Stand up comedians have no imagination, and they think that they're, like, their job is to philosophize about like dating, you know, and men and women. Right. So that's like obviously in the realm there, but like. With Elon, I think he's just a dork. Like, he's like, I mean, it really is really sad the richest man in the world is like, uh, you know, he's got, he's not, I, I'm sure he's fucked one of these women that he's married, but yeah. like, he's got virgin <laughs> energy. Like, yes. he seems like he doesn't understand <laughs> sex well, and it's gender. It's just crazy and shit. how much of these side <clears throat> products seem like they stem directly from the divorce. Like, not. Uh, like energy the story of it because him especially honing in on trans people seems like very tied to Grimes leaving him and his daughter do you hear about this you hear about yep. this you hear about this name change his yep. uh, daughter came out as trans and disowned him and like Isn't left she, like three years old <laughs> he's got like ten kids yeah. oh one of the other I forgot he's like oh, you don't think it's okay with a hundred families when, yeah okay yeah. <laughs> him and Grimes weren't actually ever married when people refer to him as being divorced oh. though they're not actually okay. wrong because he's had like a bunch of wives right yeah yeah he's, he's been with a lot of people he's been with a lot of beautiful <laughs> beautiful <laughs> women all over the there world there was some I remember I think you told me a story about that on his wedding night he was like, they were dancing after the ceremony with one of his wives. And uh, he just whispers in her ear, just so you know, I am the alpha in this relationship. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I remember that. Yeah. And he said, like, if you were my employee, I would fire you or some weird shit God. like that. Both things alphas say. Pretty hot. <laughs> Pretty hot. <laughs> like, even outside the fact of, like, don't say this to your wife, it's like, if you were an alpha, you wouldn't say that out loud. It would just be like obvious or whatever. I don't know. It doesn't seem like you understand the concept of this thing you want so badly, I guess is my criticism. It but also doesn't make any sense. Like, um, I would fire you like, but it isn't you fire her. She's gone. Like, isn't it like I would make you do a bunch of stuff yeah. under the threat of being fired or something. You would have some aimless tasks that corporate would demand you fulfill that seem somewhat unreasonable. You're, he should have whispered in her ear that, like, I will make your life very Dilbert-esque. <laughs> <laughs> Flip your tie. <laughs> it's going to go upside down. He dated uh, one of the actresses from Westworld, I think, too. I can't remember. Really? Was well, it one of the weird, robots? He... It was one of the robots. I think. Okay. Well, he clearly, like, from several accounts, has, like, no game, if you will. Yeah. Uh, that can't be true. And, and <laughs> he loves games. He, lo <laughs> right. he does love games. But the game of love and matchmaking uh, does not come easily to him, nor does it come easily to me. To many of us. But, yeah, but he's a, a billionaire. <laughs> Why, like, there's these stories of him just, you know, like, intimidating and groping Subordinate yeah. women and stuff. Right. Uh, Offer like them a you horse. You can just hire. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You can just pay people to have sex with you. If you're that rich, you don't even have to think about it. Yeah. Why would you not do? I don't know. Well, I think what's interesting about Elon is oh, that yeah. there's like a bunch of him. Like there's all these like rich guys who are rich for no reason, right? But he's the only one who like also wants to be loved for some reason. Right. Mm. Like he, yeah. it's not enough for him that he's just like a billionaire because he was born to a emerald mine guy or whatever. But yeah. now he's like. Yeah, I also need to be like a cool Twitter guy. Yeah. Also, I need to be a cool 
25 year old and it's yeah. like you are getting up to 60 years old <laughs> just let this dream die <laughs> yeah. I mean, you're right about the why isn't he just like buy sex workers thing because like the all the other fucking billionaires are yeah like they're all sociopaths but he has this naivete where he like you know because I mean, I think he is really like a believer in like capitalism and shit because he does believe you can throw enough money at any problem. And this is one that you like can't. He's right, trying right. to buy like <laughs> love, an authentic yeah. life yeah. and love yeah. and friendship and all this shit and getting his sh- fucking face, you know, slammed into the rake or whatever every time because it's like it's impossible to do that. It's sad. <laughs> so like it the is day, very sad. The day that we got into an argument with him on Twitter, he like tweeted like three or four times that day about like there's nothing nicer than like going for a drive around the block in my Tesla and like a meme of someone being like just log off, just log off. Yeah. So like you know like how like someone will be mean to you on Twitter and you feel shitty for the day. Like he still gets that. Like <laughs> as like a billionaire, he still has that thing where someone like said like fuck you on Twitter and he was like ah, I, I suck <laughs> <laughs> well we should uh, we should go to that day how did that begin this, this feud yeah so he, he posted our VLC media player tweet and then and, and what he, was that tweeting it was the um, Zodiac. The, the Zodiac Killer Zodiac one. Zodiac Killer. The the Zodiac Killer. Someone I don't fucking remember our dumb yeah. website. Uh, someone put the Zodiac Killer letter through VLC Media VLC. Player and it opened or whatever. Uh. And he he tweeted that and he erased our name off of it, which he has said many times that he disagrees that uh, you should credit anyone on the internet. So um, really? we we posted to him like, hey, this is our article, uh, and we made fun of his horse transaction thing where he like offered a woman a horse in exchange to stay quiet about his sexual harassment. Which again is like something you say <laughs> when you aren't sure what somebody else wants. Out of a I don't know. What do you need a Fucking horse? Fucking a horse? I don't know. Don't sue me. <laughs> I mean, I mean that's not to get Freudian about it for a second. That's some, you know, some insecurity there. Cause maybe he thinks that what, because if only he had a horse cock, sure. then right. she would love him. That's all so true. Horses. That's probably what was going That's on there. That's probably what it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, zooming on past yeah. that. Okay. So we so we, we we said that to him, and he responded to us, and he was like, "Well, it's only a six out of ten meme anyway, so you know, right. screw you." And then he goes, um, he "Says something about like the the." selfless art of meme creators uh, anonymous meme creators or is to be admired or something like that which is bizarre and i brought this up in our bonus episode but it, it does uh, really cut to the core of the issue that you guys don't make memes no. you make full comedy yeah. articles that, that we, like, he's just cutting the write. picture out of <laughs> yeah. which is not it's not a meme it's not a meme at all <laughs> it's also not anonymous <laughs> yeah you're too confused about what this thing you want so bad is <laughs> just do something else <laughs> um so then we said like i said uh well what do you think of this one and i posted a link to an article that was like elon musk announces he's going to mars because no one hates him yet no one hates him there yet right. and um he he responds uh less funny than SNL on a bad day. On a bad that day. That could make a drunk man sober, which is weird because, like, I almost wonder if he has, like, a shame thing going on because, he, like, he should know that he he was on SNL, like, famously, right. <laughs> like, less than a year ago. On a bad like, day, too. Yeah, a really bad day. Like, <laughs> so we just tweeted a picture of the Wario costume, him in a Wario costume on SNL, and said, like, you would know SNL's bad days, which I don't think is even that clever. Like, I think anyone right. could have come up with that. Yeah, right now, there. This and the Mars article are both just like, uh, this guy sucks. Yeah. He's like, really funny, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Try um, harder over there. And then he just went on like a rampage. He just like kept responding to himself about like Babylon B's making really good stuff right now. <laughs> and you guys are competing. So he, yeah, he called us woke and all this stuff. And then he someone um was like, Well, what do you think of this guy's articles? And tagged like one of our writers who has written like three articles. This guy Kevin Potass Podass. And uh oh, yeah. Kevin had blocked oh, him. He's funny, I don't know. Very funny. Ass. And Elon <laughs> screenshotted it and was like, Well, he has me blocked because he's a coward or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is the richest man alive. Elon. And he's like bothering Kevin podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Kevin's written more. Than th- he's written a bunch of articles for us, but uh, he's very funny. But it was just very funny that he, he I don't know, just called out Kevin. 
<laughs> Kevin like woke up from a nap like two hours later, and there were like hundreds of oh. Elon fans like unblock Elon. Why did you block Elon? Elon needs to touch grass. Yeah. Somebody a hundred <laughs> times poorer than him would just have paid uh, security contractors to have you all killed. So, <laughs> really surprised things haven't escalated yeah. in any way towards these but things. It's weird to hear from someone like that, billionaire, obviously believer in capitalism, that the internet is like a free for all. Everything should be open right. source free. Uh, makes me question: Does he really believe that? And kind of seems like he doesn't. He wants everything to be free for him. He wants yeah. to control it. He doesn't want that to actually. Well, to there be a there equal. is no objective freedom. That's like a theoretical yeah. state. What he wants is the one that feels like that to him, which right. is the one where the outcome is that he wins the online argument he's been having for weeks at a time or whatever the fuck. Not you to know? give him too much credit either, but he is somebody who, through his business transactions, you can tell is very aware of the power of like free publicity because when Tesla wasn't profitable for, you know, the entire time except that one year or whatever, <laughs> um, and is just uh, propped up off of government, you know, funds that it's like getting from all these um, uh, programs because they're hoping that will transition us off of dirty energy, right? Uh, he, the company intentionally deployed people onto Reddit to just talk about how cool he is all the time. Like there were, like that, that was a job at the company <laughs> and it worked. Like everybody yeah. on there to this day is still very pro yeah, Elon. They love him. If you control the conversation enough, it does come out in the form of money. <laughs> like he is now one of the most powerful people alive. Although yeah. looking into this, uh, situation. It is very funny because he's not the richest man, period, no. anymore. And I wonder how much of that is like directly from him doing things like trying to buy Twitter to save Babylon B. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. How much of this then do you think is his just personal gripes that are like act actively self sabotaging his own business? Or how much of it is do you think he really thinks that? hard drive making fun of him will undermine the hegemonic thing that he created through the forum workers you're describing. Oh, it's I like, think this is a hundred percent him self-sabotaging by accident. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because all of the, all of the essential tax fraud E stuff he was doing for 15 years to get his companies off of the ground had an express purpose of making money. And now that he's taken his eye off of ball for even a minute to just live his life, he is just, hemorrhaging this money yeah. <laughs> because his emotions are simply too much. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, I remember uh, it's funny that he actually found a way to game that correctly and because and, the perception stuff it, with CEOs is actually really important. I remember it's like over 10 years ago, but John Mackey from Whole Foods actually got in trouble. There was legal trouble because he was going on forums and anonymous, anonymously commenting uh, when when he got a new haircut, people were making fun of his haircut, and he went on with an anonymous account and said, uh, "I think it's cute." <laughs> that's illegal. Yeah, apparently, that's like some you know insider because that affects the that's stock a good price. Law. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which is again like Elon has definitely <laughs> broken finance law many oh, yeah. times right. in oh, a yeah. way that everyone has seen, and he hasn't been held accountable for. <laughs> well, he does, but it's just it's just money, right? Yeah. Like he the law he broke with the Twitter deal is that he had to pay a two billion dollar fine, but that's what like one percent of his income. What was the fine? His, for? His, well, I thought that I, I could be totally wrong on this because I'm dumb as fuck, but like. <laughs> I, I, my understanding was that when he pulled out of the Twitter deal, it was so late that he had to pay a $2 billion wow. fine. Did he fully pull out of it, though? I don't know. It seems like he keeps it's every confusing. week. It's, it's a new, like, oh, now Twitter. he's getting it. Now he's not getting, you know. Yeah. I think he likes the attention. He likes people to think that the, the doom is coming, that he's going to be in charge. Yeah, it's also like when you agree to buy a multi-billion dollar company, it's a whole fucking ordeal that takes like a year. Yeah, <laughs> You yeah. can't just like say, I'm out now. <laughs> I, people think it's cringe. <laughs> <laughs> There's like teams on acquisitions and stuff who are in charge of it. It doesn't work that way. There was that day he commented about... Um, uh, SpaceX or Tesla's stock price being 420 and how that was based Sick. and then they were like that's market manipulation yeah yeah <laughs> you can't do that yeah <laughs> um, so these are all like he he just has so much capital uh, of like goodwill with the government because so much of our economy is tied up in his businesses that like people are not taking him to task <laughs> on these very obvious crimes he's doing because he's kind of an idiot 
Yeah, he's own pretty dumb. Way. Yeah, he's like a he's a what was the what do they call him a level four super genius? That old video is that a reference anyone knows about? Well, They're, I mean, th- people still call him the world's smartest man right. regularly. <laughs> they think he thinks he's like Iron Man or whatever. Yeah. that's his whole thing. That was, I think... He's in Iron more Man. More people believed really? that. He's the, in the second one. He's the, in Iron Man. He's really? in Rick and Morty. The new yeah. Iron he's, Man. Well, no, he's not. The, Elon Tusk is in Rick and Morty. <sighs> but that's his voice. <laughs> he he showed up in the studio to He's a life. little bit different in that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We don't have time to get into that. The, <laughs> the Robert Downey Jr. like new rebooted Iron Man is based on... Yeah. Elon he Musk, is which is, oh, yeah. no, it's not based. <laughs> <laughs> it's, no, it's super based. I it's, think it's Chewy. <laughs> no, it's none of these things. Wait, it is Chewy. It's inspired by real life Elon Musk. So yeah. it's like a circular argument when nerds are like, he's like, uh, what's yeah. his face? Like Iron Tony Man Stark. or whatever. No, that they literally used him as the, yeah. the inspiration for that character, which is why it seems it's fucking stupid. We're trying to build a capitalism fairy tale together, and it is like falling apart at both ends. We're just like, no, it works. He's so smart, and he fixes the cars that, that were the problem, <laughs> and he's Stark, a superhero. His dad is Howard Hughes, so I think Elon should do the Howard Hughes thing, and uh, what is it? Didn't he, like, lock himself in a room yeah. and pee in jars for a month? Right. He'd grow I out his fingernails really yeah. long and shit. I think that'd be good for Elon. That'd be cool. I think that would be good for him. This is so based. <laughs> <laughs> My fingernails are so long. <laughs> It's so weird. And it does suck how, I guess there's more, uh, well, according to the Super Bowl ads, there's going to be more of these electric cars. I don't know how easy it is to to get. Well, it's not easy to get one at all, um, especially since most of them right now are, are Tesla. Other, com- other companies have like kind of caught up to the technology at this point. So right. there's like the Ford electric car and the Audi electric car. Although it does seem like most of them are like, Two hundred thousand yeah, dollar cars. So extremely I don't know. expensive, prohibitively expensive. <laughs> and I've heard that uh, in DC there's a Tesla dealership downtown, and like, um, if you get, you can't bring it to a regular auto repair shop. You have to bring it to the dealership, and they charge you like an exorbitant price just to replace like one thing. So it's like, it's you know, wasn't there that a video? Tiny, too? tiny sliver of people who are actually driving these things. It makes no difference. Folks, what am I supposed to take this thing to Radio Shack? (laughs) Wasn't there a video of like uh, a guy who didn't like make his payments on his Tesla and it drove away? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> like it was like they just like logged into it and were like alright bye oh, and then it crashed into something because it doesn't know how to do that <laughs> yeah that's the thing is do we want to keep him off Twitter because that's what he's going to be doing all that's day that's true he's harassing customers of his that's own true. company maybe the best of all possible worlds actually is where he just fights with comedians yeah. instead of actively <laughs> harming the economy and uh, the people in it did you see his Elden Ring build that went viral? I did. It was really nonsensical. It was very silly. He had two shields. I was like, I one of those guys who was like, listen, look, Elon sucks, but like everyone can play the game they want. And then yeah. I looked at it. He's like, why does he have four swords? <laughs> what the fuck is this? Your weight is like absolutely unnecessary. And then like there's a, like a lot of jargon in the post too that was like, I can lower the weight if I yeah. need to. If I need to class down. It's My like, character can't move. <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> nothing in here makes any sense. And then. Half of his myth is like, and I, you know, I sleep at the factory. I work so hard on all my fast cars. And it's like, you have been playing this game that takes 80 hours to get, like, anything. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. I, maybe because I was on your podcast recently, but every time I write Elon quotes for Hard Drive, I think of him as Pegasus, but, like, cringe. <laughs> like, cringe Pegasus from Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes. Which is like, you have to be woke, Yugi boy. <laughs> My dearest, <laughs> my dearest Grimes, <laughs> I do it all for you. <laughs> no idea. You never seen, you never yeah. seen Yu-Gi-Oh? Very I watched it on your podcast. I just don't remember the obscure character Pegasus. Pegasus oh, is the guy the with the long white hair. Oh, I remember that And the guy. eyes. He's a that bad guy. <laughs> we have to thank the Lord, who is real, and this is a yeah. Christian statement, that Maximilian Pegasus is not alive in the place of Elon Musk because he has far <laughs> greater ambitions Yes, and he's willing to do far more insidious things. Although Elon did torture those monkeys to death. But, but if he had a millennium item. Yeah, I mean, Max <laughs> Pegasus takes the souls out of boys left and right for seemingly no reason. And Peter Thiel takes the blood from boys. 
Ah, Yugi, so this freaking nerd is here to fight us with Pokemon cards. <laughs> what are we going to do? I'm the Brooklyn guy that's on that show for some reason. <laughs> That's Joey Bones. He's playing a freaking Tesla. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't, should I do more? <laughs> yeah, well, Keep yeah. going. I'm kind of out of Elon Musk facts. How much time have we done? Uh, 48 minutes. He, has, he uh, gets away with some stuff sometimes by with the... Uh, I think he has an Asperger's diagnosis. I don't yes. know when he got this. People yell at me about 2017. that. Oh, really? Whenever I criticize him, I've gotten a few, com- like maybe like three or four comments that are like, well, he's like neurodivergent. And I'm like, yeah, he's the richest man alive. <laughs> what is that? He's doing defense? fine. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing about, and I'm getting on my soapbox here again, but like people don't, not enough people realize is uh, autism or Asperger's, which by the way, we don't even use Asperger's right. as a term Right, it's like anymore. literally a Nazi scientist, right? right? Yeah. Uh, but... When somebody has, quote unquote, autism, you don't like, there's not like a little knob in Elon Musk's brain that's where the Asperger's is. <laughs> it's, it's an arbitrary diagnosis. Like th- there are people who have serious issues who are diagnosed for good, you know, and it, it helps them in some ways. But like, no, he's an asshole and yeah. he's, you know, his assholes. personality is bad. Right. So like, even if he was <laughs> not like. Not to say everybody with Asperger's has a bad personality, but, you know, or is diagnosed with it. Even yeah. if it was like He's a real trying thing, to though, excuse like, his bad personality with that diagnosis. Yes. Right. Yeah. It's, it, yeah, there's no, there's no objective thing that makes somebody autistic or have Asperger's. He happened right. to get it because he's, has, you know, weird, bad social skills. Yeah. Uh, or and is a dick, you know. He's was a this an adult? bad person. Was, was this an, an adult prescription of the Asperger's, or was this like as a kid growing up? Because I don't think we. I think he just said it when he was on SNL. He's just like, yeah, I have just right Asperger's. at the top. And by like, the way, it wasn't yeah. even true. Uh, and a good example of like why autism, I think, is a faulty you know framework is uh, Dan Aykroyd had been diagnosed with Asperger's uh, and had hosted SNL and is not an asshole. Jerry Seinfeld says he has Asperger's. Which is, yeah. I mean, he's That's I guess, how- just an example of a rich guy who's yeah. out of touch and he- thinks, oh, maybe I... Uh, have something with my mind. That's well, no, because the Asperger's, that's how he comes up with the questions of what the deal is with different things. No one else could equation. look at Pop-Tarts like that. Yeah, yeah he's oh. a savant. Yeah. Somebody spilled paint on my bread? What are these things? <laughs> he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> I don't know what it is. I don't know what to do with it. I'm at my house and I'm scared. Can you imagine taking Jerry Seinfeld to the casino with you like Rain Man and thinking he's going to make you a bunch of money? <laughs> But then all he does is All right, Jerry. <laughs> we need to hit big on this one. There's what, a, great, a green um, table? What are we on a field? <laughs> no. <laughs> these aren't chips. <laughs> you can't eat these. Where's the salsa? <laughs> There's a great uh, coded bit where he was saying, like, if he ever get if, if Seinfeld ever gets Alzheimer's, no one will know. Because he's like, who are these people? <laughs> and they're like, ah, you're so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry. <laughs> I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm neurodivergent. <laughs> and queer. If I was as Is powerful as Elon oh, Musk and I was going to give myself like a random condition on a public stage at the same time, I would go way bigger. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Restless leg syndrome. I actually have multiple personality disorder. <laughs> See, that would be excusable, right? He, he genuinely can't help it. It's he's... another Elon Musk named Dave Musk. <laughs> he cannot be trusted around the children. <laughs> He only has the one personality, though. Yeah. He wouldn't be able to pull it off. I'm not even sure if he has that one. You won't like me when Dave gets back here. <laughs> <laughs> he does have, um, you know how Snoopy has, like, a cousin that's from the desert? Yes. He has, like, brothers that are, like, Western Elon yeah. and yeah. shit. Like, one's named Django or some shit and wears a cowboy hat. I think one of them was hooked up Audi, with uh, Audi, Audi. Epstein. Allegedly or whatever, yeah, everything's really allegedly. Was on the Epstein jet. There was some, there was some Epstein stuff with him. This is an American podcast. We're allowed to slander people. <laughs> <laughs> we can't get sued for it like the Brits. We're untouchable. Yeah. <laughs> also <laughs> unlistenable. Unlike those girls on that plane. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe as a uh, thud style prank, I should apply to one of Elon Musk's companies and just with my diagnosis. So they'll say like, "Oh, autism. This guy must be a genius," and then it's just completely incompetent and everything. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I forgot my fart pills today. This is going to be a long meeting. (laughs) 
Uh, will we have any other orders of business? I imagine we... like a secret agent who instead of taking a cyanide pill accidentally takes the fart pill. <laughs> <laughs> like, you'll never get an answer from me. He like, sticks in his mouth. Uh. And he's like, oh, I feel so relaxed. <laughs> I, can, I can sit through this whole movie. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. We talked about Ape Fest. We talked about Dupe Snog. Uh, we talked about Elon. I think we solved him. We figured him out once I again. I can fix him. <laughs> There's, uh, He's a 10, but he tortured <laughs> apes to death <laughs> for brain computers. That's like literally that Onion article, too, I'm realizing. There's an old Onion video where scientists test the effects of uh, stabbing on monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> That's essentially so maybe, what he did. He's maybe like, he saw it and was like, let's do that. If I take a chunk out of their brain, will that suck? Oh, it did. <laughs> it did. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah um, I think we fixed all of the problems. Great Britain. We got the rail. Speak. Yeah. Right. Well, we didn't fix the UK rail strike. And that was the last thing that I wanted to fix today. <laughs> um, don't ride the rails. In England. Yeah. Because they're on strike. Okay, good Tuesday, to know. Wednesday, and Thursday from a video I saw. That's good to know. Which is like, yeah, so they're, they're like labor union for the, the train is on strike to combat inflation for their wages, which haven't moved up in the last few years, et cetera, et cetera, labor, labor stuff. But what's fun is the UK press going over time to smash the strike because that's like their one formative operation that they can always be called on to do, which is like <laughs> left crunching, but it, with the fun Harry Potter style voice that where they yeah. do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Right. They tried to, I saw there was this guy, dude who had like sunglasses and a polo shirt, who was a cab driver. And they tried to interview him and like goad him into saying something, you know, negative about the, the rail strikers. Like, hey, I used to work in a factory, uh, hats off to him. I stand with him. <laughs> and like they couldn't even get this guy who's like benefiting from uh, the rail being on strike to, to badmouth them. The the hits that I've seen, like the hit videos that they try to get out to like really crush this thing, are people being just complaining they couldn't get to places, which we've all seen. Sure. It's all just like, I went to go to Tesco, but I got stuck in Birmingham. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> what a nightmare. I had to take a lorry from Dunning to Wintonshire. <laughs> I had to use me flu powder. Yeah. <laughs> there was a tweet going around of some media woman who was like, "I there's a Ukrainian refugee in my home who's crying about the rail strike. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. If my home being destroyed wasn't bad enough. <laughs> it was very the, weird. The People were like, this isn't is true. Down? People were like, this isn't true. The British lady was like, then why is this girl in my, my house crying? Why rail strike? Yeah. Why rail strike? <laughs> what was funny to, uh, to me is, so Keir Starmer, Keir Starmer, is the head of the UK Labour Party, named after Labour, uh, has unions as a part of the party, like baked into the, From the word constitution of labor. the party. Keir Starmer, named after the Pokemon. Yes. <laughs> Uh, he has instructed. You may have his, known him in the '90s as Keir Star. You continue. <laughs> <laughs> He's instructed his MPs, his his underlings in the Labour Party, to not go to the picket line for a national strike. Because he's not sure how it's going to look if the Labour Party is supporting a labor union that's mm -hmm. on strike. It's kind of amazing. Yeah, um, I look forward to more and more strikes popping off as everything around us melts into air. <laughs> True. Um. Good little Marxist <sighs> reference there. Uh, speaking of which, you see the president of Colombia say <laughs> say about the, he said what they he wanted say? to start capitalism in Colombia. And oh, sick! That's my like, family. I'm oh, Jeremy yeah? Capitalism. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they said they want Hard Drive Magazine to, head, to headquarter in Bogota. Sick, dude. Oh, we meant to book Jeremy Anti-Capitalism. <laughs> yeah, fuck. I think it's great. He's the opposite of everything you do. Uh, he has a backwards hat. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, but, I, you know, a bunch of people saw that and they're like, wait, what? I thought this guy's a socialist, leftist. But then he said, because we don't even have it yet, we, we're still stuck in feudalism. And so he's like mm -hmm. using an interesting uh, Marxist uh, point about you develop uh, from feudalism to capitalism to socialism. You have to become a squirtle and then a swartortle before right. you can be blastus. Unless, yeah. you know, you are the Russians. 
And Maybe. then you can take the stone to go right to Blastoise with yeah. horrible repercussions. Yeah. <laughs> Everything can be filtered through video games. That's the oh. real point. You're not going to learn Water Gun at 34. I know. I mean, <laughs> what happens? Is there a Pokemon third evolution that's like really tormented and fucked up because it's been rushed? The evolution has been rushed? Like uh, you know, the Charizards that are like, ah, this happened too soon. You know the Charizard, be five years. The Charizard in the show was actually kind of fucked up because Ash would Ash would give it commands and it wouldn't obey him. That was actually the Charmeleon originally because he didn't have enough badges. Oh, classic. Actually, was- you know <laughs> <laughs> what you're describing actually is the weird zombie mutant ape that happens when you give too many slurp juices to a yes. lord ape. So. What? Then the ape won't obey you. <laughs> is the slurp when you juice try thing to sell real? It for money. <laughs> is that a real thing? Is that actually what they call it? I think it is real. I haven't seen any deb- I haven't seen a slurp debunk <laughs> in the news. I still don't know what it is. I'm Slurps sorry. are in the news. I, it's just, it just sounds like a Fortnite thing. Well, no, it's an NFT thing. Well, though, it is from they just stole oh, is that it, what it is? from Fortnite, oh. but made it into an NFT thing because oh. they don't believe in you know. Like property, in a sense. If you're well, getting tired of the slurp juice conversation, we will not have to have it for much longer <laughs> as <laughs> the economy plummets. <laughs> Fortnite's oh. at the center of all of culture. That's that's the truth. That's what that dance represents. It does both sides <laughs> of the body. What Mr. Petro, though, was saying in that we were going to move through the phase of capitalism is that if we apply the slurp juice now, we will end <laughs> up with a like a like an ape whose skull is kind of exposed and there's skin rotting off his flesh, and yet he's still bored, but it is disturbing. So first, we have to put the <laughs> captain's hat of capitalism on him and the 3D glasses of the market, <laughs> and then move through that process. Also, he said he likes Bitcoin, but I haven't looked into it, so I'm a little worried about this guy. <laughs> to the moon, or as we say in Colombia, La Luna. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Wow, and that's the news. All right, we did it, folks. Um, I'm dusting off my hands. Let's do plugs and get the fuck out of here. Uh, Anders, you got anything? At Anders Lee here on Twitter. Uh, there's the one on Instagram. And I... So I plugged on the last show, have a sub stack, uh, which I will be updating r- more regularly. Uh, Anders Lee here, um, sub stack dot Anders Lee. I will post it in the show notes. I forget if it's Anders Lee here or Anders Lee dot sub stack, but we will get the correct link for you. And uh, soon I will be posting. Who's on top of that? I just, sorry, I didn't know we were going to do plugs so soon. I would have had you it up. hired to handle your domain name. I didn't yeah. need to pick you first. You're just, I don't know. Right? I don't know. I just randomly picked you. We can come back around. Oh, yeah. Go to Alex, and yeah, then we'll, we'll, we'll back, circle yeah. back. We're going to circle back find out what Andrew's Substack is called. Um, follow me on Twitter at uh, Patek Test Kitchen, and that's your one, number one stop for exciting new flavors. Jeremy and I are doing a stand-up show in a month. That's true. July 15th in New York City. For the Hard Drive Video Game Magazine. Oh, so isn't that where get... the Ape Fest is in New York yeah. City? Yeah, so Amy Schumer's yeah. going to be there. Jimmy Fallon's going to uh. be there. But he's just going to stumble and drunk. Uh, yeah. He doesn't know about it. Noop Bog. Yeah. <laughs> He's on it. Technically not Snoop Dogg will be there. It's a safe space for gamers. You can go there if you're a gamer. <laughs> and we, all gamers are allowed to come. I saw you tweeted that and someone was like, I don't need a safe space. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, dude. Well, you're still invited to come. <laughs> uh, tickets for that are, they're, you know, you they're online. Us. Google it. Google it for once in your life. What am I doing here? Okay, uh, Jeremy, what else are you up to? Uh, I have a web series I made for Adult Swim called The Hamlet Factory, and you oh, can watch yeah. that. And it's you can, on HBO still. It is on it? HBO. Nice. Pretty classy, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, and then look that up. Google, Put me into Google. Type yeah, it however you want. Googled, yeah, another thing to Google. Google Get your all Google this list stuff. out. Open up Google <laughs> and then duplicate the tab like six times. Hamlet Factory. Yeah. Refresh. Refresh. Oh, yeah. Refresh. <laughs> <laughs> It'd read the hard drive, right? Yeah, check it out. Right. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's less invested in that one. <laughs> <laughs> right. I guess Elon's going to buy it soon. Yeah, so. yeah. and Google, right. too. So you want to search for it. Google's That's a true. good company. I own Google now. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, what do I got? I have a show. I'm on Fun House Comedy at Pete's Candy Store on July 20th, I think I just booked. And I remember that off the top of my head. 
Uh, listen to my other podcast, While You Mad. My handle and everything is at Feral Jokes. Follow me on Twitter if you can handle it. Uh, a lot of people can't. I <laughs> <laughs> lost a thousand followers recently for tweeting, You've all to be kidding me, which uh, I think is pretty funny. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but, when something like that happens, you got to ask yourself, you, right. You've all to be kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> the joke about Chelsea Handler and her poor taste comedy. My followers are getting massacred out there. <laughs> Um, I think uh, that's it for me. I ooh, I may have a show coming up, but I can't. It's not confirmed yet. So uh, keep wow. an eye out because I have I, something really cool might be happening. Those SNL so packets are going around. <laughs> keep your eyelids peeled for that. I uh, may or may not have something. Uh, I never know. I, I wish I could <laughs> say it right now, but it's not 100% it's confirmed. It's SNL. <laughs> yeah, I'm hosting Saturday Night It's Live. Thud. He's rebooting Thud. <laughs> and, uh, Jake has been rapping online all week. It's finally paid off. <laughs> I've seen that video too many times. <laughs> what video? There's oh, a guy yeah. who raps directed at Lauren Michaels. It's like, yeah. oh, oh, you yeah. think it's pretty cool to rap. Oh. I have a song that you're not going to think is crap. But he um, did the Uvalde song, too. Yeah. Well, why, did he, he why did he get yelled at on Twitter? Well, I guess he, he did. Oh, he, he did. He absolutely is getting yelled at. <laughs> it's, it's because he uh, is a true soldier who's like, he's like, you know when they... Uh, to get into the Hogwarts station, you have to like run at the wall at full speed or whatever and yeah. believe it's there. He like has that, but for like industry meritocracy, <laughs> it's very beautiful in a way. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that guy now. Yeah, he's somebody who would be fun to hire as a joke, which yeah. I feel I suspect SNL has done uh, a couple of times, <laughs> but a long, long time ago. But you remember that right wing woman who was on at the same time as Al Franken? I think they did her as <laughs> just as, as a, a bit. bit. Yeah, just one as a like, cast member. Would be funny. Yeah. A, a, a ironic cast member. Yes, That's a I'm big pretty decision. Sure. I'm pretty oh, sure that they happened. do that all the time, or they try to balance things out. Lauren Michaels is a Republican. He wants <laughs> there to be, you know. <laughs> Yeah, Fair, I guess, uh, yeah, it was like an affirmative action hire because she was conservative. Um, <laughs> conservative so action hire. You can find me at Anders Lee here on Twitter, Dursley on Instagram, and on Substack, anderslee.substack.com. We're going to be having Ooh. some speculative fiction. Just pu published a short story recently about a podcaster in the DC universe who lives in Metropolis and uncovers the truth about uh, Superman, that he's an anti-imperialist. Oh my uh, God. We're also gonna be wow. having some excerpts from a, uh, something I wrote a long time ago, but we got some juicy excerpts about the world in which uh, Ralph Nader is president. Um, you can find that, again, <laughs> andersley.substack.com. Real apples and oranges examples right there. <laughs> hey, it's all over the place. I have too many niches, but we're going to make it work. It's going to be so many niches that they're um, going to be, it's actually going to be the theme is that there's too many niches. There's too many niches. Too well, many I'm signing niches. up right now. Oh, yeah. Mm. And uh, follow us all on Truth Social. <laughs> uh, we didn't even get into that, but that's... Share your truths. All right. Um, it's uh, finished. finished. It is finished. Just got a note.